Hello fellow nerds, T. Allen here, coming to you from Tampa, Florida. I promised y'all another Writer's Corner. I asked you guys to uh, um, get together, give me some some feedback on what you wanted to hear. Uh, thanks to Clayton Keach who gave me some, uh, some stuff to work with. Uh, so uh, the question that he asked me essentially was, could I go over the rewrite process? Because you remember the last time I talked to you guys about, hey, sit down, get your, get your thoughts on paper, start writing the story, and you can always worry about fixing it later. And, uh, and so uh, in the rewrites, that great stories aren't written, they're rewritten. And so I said, sure, absolutely, I'll, take, I'll do that. So um, I thought about it. I wanted to talk about two stories. One of the stories is the one that I'm working on right now. And another story is, is the Priscina Crusade, uh, which is the second installment in my uh, uh, Priscina trilogy. So um, to start with, we'll talk first about, about the Priscina trilogy, about the Priscina Crusade. Um, when I wrote the Priscina Crusade, I have, I, I, when I sit down to write any story, I typically have an idea of where my characters start. And I have an idea of what I want them to get out of the journey. Sometimes I'll have a scene or two. Um, and then at the end, um, I have a pretty good idea of how it all ends up, at least in some fashion or form. Um, the Persina Crusade was a little bit different as they, they're all a little bit different, but in the Persina Crusade, uh, I kind of had this vision. I don't want to talk too much about details because I don't want to spoil it for those of you out there. But by the way, one of the things I will say about the Persina Crusade and possibly it's how much I went through to get it finished. Uh, but I still consider the last hundred pages of the Persina Crusade, the best hundred pages I've ever written. And I still pitch that together, cons consecutive pages. And I still pitch that uh, when I'm at, at, at cons and stuff, when people are asking me about the Priscina Crusade. You know, I don't typically give away much story, but I will tell them that is the best 100 pages, that last 100 pages is the best 100 pages I've ever strung together as a career back to back. And uh, I'm pretty proud of this new one, but I'm, I'm still going to stick with that for now. We'll see how the finished product of War of the Gods comes out. And I may have to kind of slow down on talking on saying that because I'm really happy with War of the Gods. But we'll talk about War of the Gods in a second. But the Priscina Crusade, what I really had was I had a huge problem. I wrote it from start to finish. I just keep writing and slogging through and I'm trying to get stuff. And I know the journey that I want my character to be on. And I looked at the beginning of it and, and, and the main character that I wanted you to feel about and to be invested in really wasn't in the first third of the book or quarter of the book. I mean, she made an appearance here and there, but she wasn't the crux of the story. She didn't have a journey that she didn't really start her journey until after really act one of the book. And I, that wasn't going to work. I had to involve her in that story. And I understood that. And I realized that I either that or I had to change characters. And I didn't want to do that. So what I ended up doing was um, I created, I started to create a, a plot line. And I ran that thread to kind of either parallel and even brought her into some of the big uh, action sequences of the first book. And um, that really worked out well. And um, so um, that went, that part was great. And I'd fixed that part. And I was really pretty happy with that. Actually, I was really happy with that. But I, I, what was tempering that was I wrote from start to finish and I had a, the finished product. I didn't like the finish. I didn't like the end of the story. I didn't like how it progressed. And I looked at that and I was like, man, how do I do that? And I sweated and I rewrote and rewrote and rewrote and rewrote. And I was just never happy with it. And then I don't even remember how exactly it came to me. I certainly should because it was an aha moment. But I do remember I am going to flip what happens to these two characters. This person's going to get this person's fate. This person's going to get this person's fate. And we're going to change the way that it ends for these people. And that was it. Then it became an incredibly, in my opinion, an incredibly satisfying story. I spent, I lost a lot of sleep on it, but that was all rewriting. I would never have been able to do that if I didn't have something on paper. If I'm trying in my head to do this and do that, it doesn't work as well in my experience to do that. I had stuff on paper that I could move and cut and paste and go, ah, and finally to sweat, sweat and stress over. And so I was finally able to come to that conclusion and make those fixes and once I made that decision, the book was ready for print in just a couple of weeks. A couple, or maybe, well, it was ready at least to go to the editor within a couple of weeks of that. 
Uh, that would never have happened if I hadn't written the book and then dealt with the changes. Uh, I'm a pantser, but we'll talk about that another time. So I'm not so much a plotter, so I had to figure those things out. And even plotters, if you are a plotter, um, you may find that that story that sounds really good in the outline doesn't, doesn't play so well when you write it on paper. And that's something that you have to find out. So that was, that was, that was the Priscina Crusade, and that was the blood, sweat, and tears, and that may color my opinion a little bit about the end, but I will tell you, I love the end of that book. I love it. It's a great story. I, I loved I loved the Priscina Crusade. I, I I I thought it was a lot of fun to write. So, getting away from the Priscina Crusade onto the onto uh, War of the Gods. Okay, I can give even fewer details, but I can tell you this: what I'm essentially writing it's a flintlock fantasy. It's a Napoleonic time period, and these folks are polytheistic Greco-Roman style you know, uh, gods. And there are, although I don't call them titans, but there are essentially old gods and new gods. And my main character's country worships the uh, new gods and some of his surrounding neighbors worship the old gods. And there's there's a lot of other stuff that goes on and, 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 and that's all great. But there are a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of um, real life people. You know, it's primarily about characters. And that's one of the things that I think I'm gonna talk about in my next installment is making sure that you have characters that people love it and that, that, that they are invested in because otherwise they really don't care about your cool worlds and your cool, you know, guns and the, 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 all that stuff has no meaning if the characters in the foreground aren't important to us. But again, that's another, that's another, that's another day. Um, <clears throat> but at any rate, getting back to, um, getting back to War of the Gods. So I'm a pantser. As I talked about before, for those of you out there who don't know the difference between a pantser and a plotter, um, a plotter is a guy or a gal that sits down and writes a big outline and says, "Okay, and you know George R. R. Martin, I would guess, is a pl is a is a is a plotter, right? Because he's got, you know, you can go to the end of his books and he can tell you about every family that's ever been in the all the histories and and that's great." And my guess is, though it could be wrong, that he wrote all that out and plotted all that out and had all that stuff on some sort of paper or string, string chart or something when he sat down to write the book. He may not have, but I'm guessing he did. Um, the other group of people is a pantser, and I'm a pantser. And historically, I write science fiction that I can extrapolate kind of, you know, Lunatic City is, you know, it's a noir. It's a detective noir. It takes place on the moon, but it, it, it's right there with Sam Spade or any of these others. Dennis Lehane, I consider to be the, the biggest influence. But, you know, it's a noir story. It's a detective story. It's old as time. So it's not other than taking some of the, you know, a little bit of cyberpunk and put in there. And it's really not a cyberpunk book. I kind of tell people, if you like cyberpunk, you might like it. But it's primarily a detective story. Um, uh, the Priscina Trilogy, you know, those and, and, and those books are... Um, you know, that I, I, I call that Les Mis meets Battlestar Galactica, the, the reimagined Battlestar Galactica. It's gritty. It's kind of real of the world, but it's about a lot of political tensions and strife and turmoil, which are as relevant today as they were when, when, Les, Mis, you know, when Les Mis takes place or with the Romans or any of those. And that's, that's kind of the theme of that book is we, we don't really change as much as we'd like to, right? So, um, so that, those stories, though, you can extrapolate from the society that we have. And so I really borrow from our history. Um, and while I, while I do all of those things with War of the Gods, you know, I borrow a little bit of ideology from, you know, it's got the Greco-Roman feel and it's got all that. It's still a very foreign uh, world in the sense that it's its own it's got its own culture and its own religions and it's got all this stuff that I kind of have to make from scratch and I have to have, I have to know how all the parts and pieces work together. And I actually did some notes and, and a little bit of plotting I had to. So I did a little bit of plotting to get some notes and ideas on where I wanted to go with this stuff. And then I sat down and I started writing the story. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the story's already changed tremendously as I wrote it because I wrote out this big, long, uh, I started just writing, just as I tell everybody else to do. Just pick up the pen or start, 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 start the keyboard. And I will tell you that I didn't like my opening scene. I was lukewarm on my second scene, although I did like that. There was there were parts about that I really did like. Uh, I didn't. I I, I needed. It. I knew that it was probably going to change a little bit, but I kept writing. And you know, a lot of times, 
by the time you're in your third act, by the time you're realizing these, you're bringing these characters together and you're creating real conflicts and you're doing all of those things, you go, aha, so now I see some of the cogs, some of the wheels, you know, especially if you're a pantser. So, you know, I started to see some of these, some of these storylines coming together when I got, you know, 90,000 words into a 180,000 word manuscript. So, you know, a lot of those parts and pieces weren't coming together for me until then. So guess what that means? That means that I wrote the end of the book and I think that that's going to stay largely as written. It's going to change a little bit, I'm sure. In fact, I know a few places that it will. But most of that last half, last two thirds, probably half, is going to change noticeably. Um, but... I now know the journey that my characters are on, and I rewrote the first chapter. I rewrote the prologue. Not completely from scratch, but I changed the focus because I know what the central conflict is. I know how those parts and pieces fit, and I now know where I can put those in this part of the story so that it makes sense in the later part of the story. And while that is a little bit of how the sausage is made, and some people don't want to know that, the purpose of this writer's corner is to tell you some of that stuff. And that's essentially what this is, and that's essentially what's what's happening now. I'm uh, I'm about mm, I'm probably not even a third of the way through rewrites. I've been doing a lot of business stuff. I'm changing a lot of my business model right now, so that's slowing me down on the rewrites right now. But I'm okay with that because I really think that what I'm about that I'm entering into an era that's going to see a lot of outreach, and and I I, I hope you're going to see the brand of T. Allen Diaz grow quite a bit in the next couple months. We'll see. We'll see, but I'm trying to make some changes to the way I do things, and I think some of those, I think some of that's going to bear some fruit. But I don't. But that's not that. We'll talk about that another time. But at any rate, so that's that's where I'm at, and that's how that happens, you know. So now I'm rewriting these stories, and I'm getting them to um, to where the front lines up with the back because the back, man, it's there. And even the front, man, I read some of these scenes that I'm not touching or that I'm just touching up, and I'm changing you know, a little here and there. And I like the dialogue. I like how smooth it is. I like the way, you know, uh, as an artist. And I want to say, I will do that here and now. A special shout out to Maya Cleave, who I think has made me a, a much stronger writer from her input on how I did things in Lunatic City. I think that that was a major turning point for me as an author. I'm sure I'll have other influences, but it's nice to give a shout out to those who've actually helped, um, helped to change that style a little bit. And I think that that when I read that now, I can see, hmm, you know, I have come a little ways as a writer, which makes me want to go back and fix you, <laughs> change some of the old stuff I wrote. But I still, I'm happy with that stuff. It's good, but I, I'm just, I like, I like the direction things are moving right now, and I'm really, really excited. And there's a lot coming out. So uh, anyway, I've dragged this out a little bit longer, but I'm hoping that people who want to listen to the writer's corner don't want to just hear a four-minute blurb about, hey, here's this, you know. So uh, I'll try to keep those a little separate if uh, my screen is cracked, but I think that says 13 and a half minutes almost. So that's a little long for me, but I, I think it's good information and I, I want you guys to, to enjoy this. If I'm talking too much, just tell me. If there's anything else you want to talk about, I've got a couple ideas lined up, but I'm always willing to shelve those if you guys have something else you want to talk about. So um, if you have further questions, follow-ups, we'll have a discussion on Facebook or I'll do another video, whatever you guys want to do. But in the meantime, T. Allen. 